All right, let's talk about some productivity tactics. I made a video on my main channel titled, Would You Open the Letter? And the concept is, I even have another letter behind me and the exact same thing. I didn't even mean to like, um, you can see, I've literally not even opened it. You see that shit? I've not even opened, I'm not gonna show you the address. Motherfucker started turning up at my house, bro. But um, exact same thing, 6, 7 p.m. I'm like slowly unwinding for bedtime. Exact same thing, bro. My sister walks in with the letter. I grab it, just throw it to the side of my room. I'll open it at like 2 p.m. today. Now I want to talk about some key productivity tactics because that video was about productivity, but I just wanted to like go through this certain situation. And you can probably relate with emails that you receive, messages that you receive, letters. Your attention is going to be stolen from you if you don't guard it carefully. Like you, th to most guys, this is something that you've never even considered and it's so vital. You know, everything you've wanted as a man, you wanted to achieve success, you wanted to build a better body, you want to like make the business, get a high level career, attract a girlfriend, everything that you've wanted, think about what it comes down to. Your focus, your productivity, your ability to do work. Do not allow like other people to steal your ability to do work. Do not allow yourself to become distracted by shit. What you need to have is like a perfect, fantastic routine where you stay like utterly focused. Best case scenario is you wake up and your phone's fucking switched off. In fact, I'm gonna start doing that, you know, I don't wake up to an alarm clock anymore for like better sleep and, and this is actually a bit big one, we should talk about sleep. Do you know, there's all these productivity tactics that really like, has changed the trajectory of where this video was going to go. I didn't consider this, but there's all these productivity tactics. But honestly, if you just implement the, some of the fundamentals, you'll be twice as productive as you currently are without thinking much of it. And sleep is the number one main thing that you can do. Trust me when I say like, I've watched and learned from a bunch of successful people. I've read a lot of books. I've watched a lot of like videos, podcasts of, of like successful, productive, you know, like those cold hearted businessmen who work for hours and everything. I've learned a lot from them because my, my idea has always been that I want to learn from these guys who like do lots of work and everything so that I can do it better than them and like have to work less. So I don't have to work like 10 hour days and everything. And the number one thing that all these guys, you know, these cold hearted type of businessmen who you, you would assume they're all saying like five hours of sleep and shit. Every single one of them say that the number one thing that they've done to improve their productivity is sleeping more. How is your sleep? Be totally, totally honest. Now, here's the thing, whatever you just thought then, like, oh yeah, like it, it, it's good, I don't really have to, or maybe you kind of know it's not too good. Your self-analysis of your sleep is usually not accurate. In like studies done and like, you know, research, like I don't have like the fucking um, qualification in the shit, but from the, the books that I've read, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, and I've watched a bunch of his podcasts. Most people don't, after you're sleep deprived for a certain level, you actually lose the ability to really like be aware of how low you are functioning because you kind of get used to functioning as if you're fucking crippled as if you've lost like 20 IQ points as if as if you've lost 20% of your your memory capabilities so you right now you won't really know if you're even sleep deprived like you'll know because you've got shitty habits and it's so extreme but for the majority of young guys where it's a lot less extreme and it's still like it's still significant but it's not to the point that it's so obvious which is going to be the majority it's pretty much everyone I think the stat was like 80% of people are sleep, like don't sleep it long enough. You must have the humility to write to right now. Just think, yep, it, chances are it has to be me. When I tell you, like I've invested a lot of time and money into my sleep. I've done sleep experiments. I track my sleep data every single night. And I promise you right now that I am part of that 80% and I've tr really tried. Chances are that you are too. That's what the main place to start right now is just think, okay, how can I improve my sleep? You want the easiest advice to implement? Just allocate more time to bed. Go to bed 20 minutes earlier, 30 minutes earlier, and just try to sleep a little bit earlier. You know, like turn all the lights off, read with like a dim light or read on like a Kindle, read with like the night, um, night shift, you know, like the, the orangey screen thing. Wake up a little bit later if you can. That's the number one best thing you can do is literally just extend how long you're in bed for. Nice and simple. Another productivity tactic is batching. Batching is like, it's common sense, but most people don't actually do this. So imagine you have a <laughs> dirty bathrobe. Would you just put this one bathrobe in the washing machine and nothing else? And then the next time you have a dirty shirt, which you need to wash, and then the next time a dirty pants, would you put each one into the washing machine per time? No, of course not. You'd batch it. 
you'd fill up the the washing machine, wouldn't you? When you're driving, would you stop every single time you go past the gas station and fill up your tank with five dollars? No, of course not. You'd stop when you really need gas, and then you put in twenty dollars, thirty dollars, fifty dollars, because when you're doing a thing, you can do multiple of that thing at the same time. So I could get my camera out, I could set up my lights, set up my room and everything, and <laughs> like move all like the fucking clothes on the floor, just move them so you can't even see them behind my uh, bed. <laughs> I could do that, record one video and then call it a day and then you know up upload the video and everything and put it into my editor's document, upload it to YouTube and stuff, okay? That would be like kind of a waste of time because at the same time that I record one video, why don't I just record three videos? Because the setup time of this, you see like, okay, everything's already set up. This is the third video I'm recording right now. Everything's set up, the light is set up, everything in my room is set up, I'm already in the flow of things. Imagine if I literally just recorded one video and I just like stopped everything, uploaded it one time. It's not worth it. Now, what could you batch? What do you check in terms of like messages and emails? That's one of the big ones. You might not think that like a message, you know, on like going on WhatsApp, text message, Instagram DMs, you might not think that replying to them or to replying to emails takes that long. And technically it doesn't. You can reply to a message how fast? Two seconds, three seconds, you know, you, you see a message. It, it changes, like it, it saps your focus for more like 15 minutes. There's like an old, like quite classical study from like King's College or King's like London or some shit, like some like prestigious university in the UK. I wonder how they did it, how they legally did this, but they tested that the effects of having a phone with notifications actually ruined your productivity more than being high. Literally, so it's better for you to fucking smoke weed. It's better for you to be stoned than it is to like reply to messages in the middle of a work task. Because as soon as you reply to messages, as soon as you just take your focus away from the task at hand, it's, it, it's just corrupted. And this is so much more important than it really seems to you because again, everything that you want just comes from your ability to focus on a task and really just perform well. Whether that's weightlifting and you wanna build like a muscular physique, whether that's being able to cultivate like positive loving relationships with people that you care about able to like make businesses and level up in your career. It's all based on your focus. And it seems so innocent to just, you know, be doing some work and oh, let me just like take a fucking Facebook break. I remember being in high school, right? And I was in history class and the teacher asked this one guy how long his work had taken him, how his homework. And he like, he, he answered, oh, including Facebook breaks. And I didn't think anything of it back then, but it just popped up into my mind, just thinking like, bro, like, that just, it just sounds fucking cringe, like, first of all, like, oh, Facebook break. But just, it, this is so normalized to disrupt your focus with all this bullshit fucking technology around you. It's so normalized to check Discord, to check WhatsApp and shit. For at least half of the, the first part of your day, for the least, like, four, five, six hours of your, of your, your morning, your afternoon, when you're in the middle of the, you know, the best work that you could do, turn your phone off. Keep it on silent, turn it on. Like my phone has been on do not disturb for around four years. I'm not taking up the piss. My phone has been on do not disturb, all notifications disabled for multiple years. Even before I became like productive, even before I went on to like self-improvements, I disabled all that shit because I'm not a dumbass. Like I wasn't, like I am a dumbass, but I'm not like a fucking like cringe motherfucker who wants to take like Facebook breaks. When you're trying to achieve something for yourself, you, you don't, you can't afford these fucking Facebook breaks. You, you know what's better than a Facebook break? Achieve like the big goals that you have for your business, for your homework, for, for all this shit that you want to do. And then go spend 30 minutes, one hour on Facebook afterwards, no problem. Don't disrupt the tasks that you're doing halfway to like go and do something. It's so much better with this deep work, this unrelentless focus. You have this task in front of you. You sit down and you do it one hour, two hours, no, like nonstop, not looking at this, um, anything else apart from like your computer screen. None of this fucking bullshit, like little pussy, um, 
productivity Pomodoro. Like, I can't believe people recommend the Pomodoro technique, bro. You're like, you are a little bitch if you use it. I'm just going to be totally honest. This idea, oh, 25 minutes and then I take a five minute break, bro. It's literally been proven time and time again that the Pomodoro technique is like, it's not good for pro productivity whatsoever. It's the only one benefit is that you're, if you're a total spurg and you can convince yourself like, oh, but I, I'll only work for 25 minutes and I can have a break. But it's like, fuck that, bro. Just stop, stop like seeing yourself as like such a little child that you have to like lie to yourself and say, oh, 25 minutes, start talking to yourself like you're a fucking man and sit, sit, sit down to yourself and say yeah i'm gonna do this task it is in my capability to sit down and focus on this task for two hours of course there's gonna be some feelings of boredom of course there's gonna be some feelings of distraction but i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna do this task for two hours i'm making that commitment to myself fucking 25 minutes and then a five minute oh but oh i can't do any more work my pomodoro technique timer has gone off Oh, no. look everyone, does anyone want to add me on the forest app? Look how many trees- shut the fuck up, bro. Look how many trees I've added to the forest app, guys. Bro, <laughs> look look at what you're doing, bro. If you've got these apps downloaded, if you set a 25 minute timer for your fucking work, if you set like, oh, but I've planted trees on my product, bro. Just sit there, just look at yourself in the fucking mirror. Do you see a man or a little fucking like little girl who's like, oh, but the colorful trees. Oh, I've almost unlocked the next tree. Come on, bro. <laughs> I can't speak to you like like you're a man, bro. <laughs> and then working on things that are essential. The AC20 rule. Now, you've, you've heard this so many times, you're thinking, okay, th this video's gonna get, start to get a bit shit now because he's talking about shit that I've heard too many times. That's what you're thinking. They, like, everyone talks about the 80 20 rule, but they just put it in this, like, autistic, like, oh, the Pareto's principle, and there was more, like, shut the fuck up. The easiest thing that you've got to focus on, what is the true one or two things that are gonna make a difference for you in this area that you're trying to work on? Forget everything else. What is the one or two things that's gonna make a significant difference that is gonna give you the absolute best they are, that are absolutely essential that you cannot continue without? For me, it's recording videos, right? So as a YouTuber, it's recording videos and then it's simply just learning so that I can record more videos. Those are the two things that I do. Every time that I take a step out, like away from the two main like tasks, my, my 80, like the things that give me 80% of my results. And I do bullshit like fucking collabs and DMs and, you know, just random other shit that I could be doing and all this. Like, everyone tells me to make a TikTok. Shut the fuck up. I'm not making a TikTok. Oh, Hamza, your, your, your brand image, like the um, fucking merch and like, oh, change your, your profile picture, Hamza. What if you change your YouTube banner, Hamza? What if you did? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I record videos and I read. That's all I do with work. I record videos and I read. I record videos and I read. Those are my 80%. What are yours? And don't bullshit yourself. There is one or two tasks that are absolutely essential for you and all the other ones are unessential and those other ones distract you from the essential. You must clarify this to yourself right now. What is the absolute essential? Then double down, triple down on them. For me, it's recording. So like literally all I focus on is just learning so I can teach more things. And then also like a meta learning where I can like record better. So I like, I can learn how to present myself better, how to tell better stories. That's all I, I focus on. Every time that I take a step away from that, I just think to myself afterwards, like, I was like, well, that was kind of like a waste of time, wasn't it? It was like, that wasn't a good use of my time whatsoever. Why did I just spend like half a day making this fucking website? Or, you know, just stupid shit like this. Why did I just like make a logo? Like I've never made a logo because I'm not a fucking weirdo, but like people who make logos just fucking make me cringe. Oh, oh today like, I'm going to write my business plan. No offense to him, right? He had, I know he doesn't watch my videos. No offense to him, but there's an old friend that I have and we were both business minded and like, he just didn't really do much with it. He was the type of guy who like, he would write business plans and shit. Oh, I'm a business plan, here's my logo. And he would, he would do all this like unimportant stuff. In the book by MJ DeMarco, millionaire, the, the book, The Millionaire Fast Lane, and then also his second book, Unscripted. MJ DeMarco, fantastic author if you want to become financially free. He talks about action faking. And he always like, he was criticizing the people who do this and like they just waste time on these like bullshit tasks. Are you like a bullshitter? Just be totally honest. Are you a bullshitter? What have you, like, think about the last few tasks that you've done. Think about, excuse me, think about the last week. Have you just been wasting your fucking time doing these, like, little unimportant tasks? Be totally honest because you're going to, right now, you're going to be so certain because you don't want to admit weakness. You're going to be so certain that everything that you've done is, like, of utmost importance. And Hamza, I already know about the 80-20 rule. Have some humility and ask yourself, what if you were wrong? Have some humility and ask yourself, what would Hamza think about the tasks that you've just been, been doing? Now, of course, I'm a bit of a dick. 
But if you tell me like you're a YouTuber, yeah, I've literally just been focused on recording. I'd be like, yeah, good. So you can see like, I wouldn't just like be horrible to you for no reason. If you're like trying to study, then if you've been literally studying and focusing on like memory, memorization techniques, then fair enough. If you've been like practicing the exam papers and exams and stuff, fair enough. If you've been color coding fucking post-it, what, what, like those dickhead students were like uh, highlighting in multiple colors and writing notes and like, you know, reading a book and like doing study sessions and all this shit, bro, come on. Ask yourself right now, what would I think about the task that you've been doing over the last week? Be cutthroat. Only one or two tasks are worth your time. And then like your time should go into doubling down on those tasks, get better at those tasks. Do like meta learning for those tasks. If you're studying right now for an exam, Stop all this bullshit about these color-coded techniques and all this shit. Study the actual paper, study like, you know, practice the test, do whatever the, the specific thing that you have to like practice for, and then do meta-learning where now you're gonna learn how to like, literally watch a course or something, how to improve your memory, how to improve like your study scores by like improving your sleep and your diet beforehand. Those are like meta-learning, the things that kind of help the, the thing indirectly. That's what you should spend your time with. This, like, this extra stuff that people do because everyone has this like small dick mindset of like the any benefit. Everyone wants any benefit. If it gives you a benefit, everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll do it then. Who cares about any benefit? You will now chase after the best benefit. When you find the thing which gives you the best benefit towards your goal, you triple down on that. This any benefit mindset, especially as you become more successful, I didn't think the video would go this way, but as you become more successful, if you're someone who's like popping off on like social media, if, you're, if your business is doing really well, if you're becoming more social, you'll realize as you become more successful, even in grades and you know, you become a, be a better student, you'll get so many more opportunities and the majority of those opportunities are part of the 20, part of the 80% that give you 20% of your success. Success leads to failure for most people. Right now, maybe you're not successful, but eventually it will happen to you that you know, you've been working hard, your grades start going up and you're getting all these extra like, curricular activities that will take you away from the thing that was actually improving your grades. This is that dilemma of like the young athlete who's working really, really hard, like some boxer, some UFC player or some shit, and they, they're working really hard, they're totally focused, and then they get in, they do really well, everyone's celebrating, they've won so much money, now they get invited to parties and they start taking drugs and they start fucking a lot of women. Oh, I'm living the life. And then they're kind of hung over for the next competition and they get fucking destroyed by the guy who's still focused. This happens to many, many athletes. This happens to most like social media influencers because a lot of them are brain dead. Don't let it happen to you. Focus on the best benefit and double, triple down on it and understand that there's gonna be so many things that will give you a benefit. This is what you must put into your mind. That everything eventually, when you like get higher and higher up, Eventually everything every opportunity will give you some kind of benefit every single one will give you a benefit And you'll be thinking like oh no, but we could if you know if I did that club We might get some subscribers if I did that brand deal We might get some money if I if I sign up for this fucking Duke of Edinburgh like they, oh, they come into schools and they tell children like oh do the Duke of Edinburgh award Where you can go camping with some teacher who keeps trying to touch you and like but it'll look really good on your your CV when you apply for your application to to, to university shut up, bro Focus on the best benefit that not like the one or the two things that give you like literally the exact the exact result that you want Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.